views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Well, coming up from remote learning to homeschooling to juggling family life and career, founders of Moms Make It Work, Veronica Guiti, joins me on this New Year's edition of Perspectives. Join us as we discuss some simple and affordable things that you could actually do to help your young children thrive in their homes and also in their classrooms. That plus a whole lot more coming up on this edition of Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Jaime. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you're making moves solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, just speak on your decisions. Because in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with Shines of Light. Because it might make a difference in someone else's life. Make a difference in someone's life. Express what's in your heart and your mind. Share your perspective. And hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Hyman. Of course, we thank you for joining us. And of course, you can watch us here on Bronx this Channel 67 every week. Also, we in Encourage you to stay connected to us on the web at bronxnet.org and of course all of our social media platforms at bronxnet TV. For a more personal contact, you can get to me on Facebook, Darren C. Jaime. That's our professional page. And then Instagram and Twitter at DC Jaime23. It's hard to believe that we're in the beginning of a new year. And yes, in the middle of a new year and a lot of new things happening. Of course, we can be talking about Washington, DC. We'll talk about that at another time. But we figure we go in a totally different direction today and really get our hearts and minds on something that can really be of substance to you, something that can be of assistance to you in a time like this. And so we got a very special show coming up for you. I want to let you know that since the beginning of this pandemic, the entire world has had to make transitions. And joining me now to share her perspective on this New Year's edition of Perspective is uh, founder Veronica Guiti. She's a producer. She's also a media personality, has worked on various media outlets such as Black Enterprise and Essence. And yes, even with us on Bronxnet Television, she's a friend as well as a former colleague who's even worked on this show back in the days. And she's also the founder of a wonderful platform called Moms Make It Work. Today, she joins me right here on Perspectives. And uh, welcome to the show, Veronica. Darren, it's so good to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I know you got I got you on the other side, and now you're, you know, usually you're filling in for me, working with me, but we got right. you on the other side where we can talk about some stuff. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for having me. No, I'm glad to have you. So listen, I want to talk to you a few moments about, you know, your yourself, right? You're making a transition. We're all in the middle of a pandemic. And not only are you a broadcast journalist, you're a mother and you're holding it down. And so you got Moms Make It Work. So for somebody who doesn't know about Moms Make It Work, let us know. So, okay, thank you. Uh, this was a platform I created two years ago, but it was a 10 year idea. And it was an idea that came actually when Oprah had a contest that was going on and she was looking for some new content. And I was like, what can I do? What content can I put on there that the own network will love? And so I said, I wanted to create a show for moms, um, which was inspired by my mom who has eight kids. And she, so she's the one that has held it wow. down for years and taught me how to make it work. And I wanted to create a show where we're helping moms fulfill their dreams. Mm -hmm. Now the show was not picked up, <laughs> but the idea always stayed with me. And after I became a mom, I was like, you know what? This is difficult. Like no one explained to me the juggle. Like I saw my mom doing it, but when you're actually in it now, you realize right. how hard it really is. And so um, I said, you know what? What I feel moms need the most is community. And we need to realize that even though we're mothers, that we can't forget about ourselves, that we too have the freedom to put ourselves first. And when we, when our children see us going after our dreams, 
they will also have the freedom to do the same. And so that's what the community has been about. And so before, for the past uh, two years, I've been having events, showcasing um, speakers um, to come in and just to give tips and just to talk about what it is to make it work, how you can yeah. be an entrepreneur and a mom, how you're balancing out that work-life balance. If you're a stay-at-home mom, how do you make sure that you're not doing it alone and reaching out to other moms who are also who also have the same mindset that you do? So, you know, that was uh, what I was doing, having uh, these events and reaching out to mom so that we can come together and just inspire one another. Um, so that's what the let me, let me ask you this then. When you talk about, you know, helping moms and making it work, one of the biggest transitions that we all have had to work and make work is that tradition. I mean, that, you know, that transition from the classroom now to remote learning and moms were actually trying to juggle work at home from behind a computer. And at the same time, also trying to navigate that lifestyle of home with the kids. You're doing it. So, so talk to me about how you're doing it and talk to me about how you want moms to do it. Let me tell you, Darren. <laughs> Let me tell you. Before this happened, right? It was, okay, so it was March. And um, my son, he's five. He was in, he's in preschool. My daughter also, she's three. And Are you on your way to eight kids, my, by the way? Huh? Are you on your way to eight kids? I'm you said I'm one of eight kids? Are you on your are you on your way to eight kids like your mother? Oh no, no, no. See, this is why <laughs> okay. I did it. Because God is like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm good with my Just two. Just ask me. <laughs> I'm good with my two. Like okay. I want to be with my mom in so many ways, but not that. <laughs> <laughs> one boy, one girl. Thank you very much. Gotcha. <laughs> Before this happened, you know, they're both going into school now. And I was structuring my day. I was like, yes, they're going to be in school from 830 to 245. I can get so much done. I can start to pick up work again. And then boom, this happens. And it's like, I have to homeschool. And here's my son. Because see, <laughs> I have to really? homeschool. Right. I know. Okay, so I have to homeschool now. And so um, now I'm thrown into this and now I have to figure out how I'm gonna juggle everything. Um, and it, it was difficult at first and it, it almost was a, a rude awakening because it's like, yes, I know I can make this work, but how am I going to do it? And so I just started my research. Um, it helped a lot with the teachers sending in um, work and you know sending the packets. But what I quickly realized was that my son was not there for these Zoom calls. He he was you know he wasn't paying attention. And you know even us as adults um, when we're on all these Zoom meetings, you know we get distracted. And so it was more stressful for me um, talking about pussy. Are you paying attention to your teacher? What did she just say? You have to make sure you're looking at the screen. And I spoke to his teacher and I said, you know what, I'm going to take him out. And I did the same for my daughter. And I just got the goals from the teachers. Okay, where are they supposed to be at this moment? And, um, and, and that's what I did. And I started doing my research. And honestly, I started looking at other homeschool moms to see what they were doing. YouTube is a great friend. And yeah. um, you won't believe I found ways that I could do it on a budget. I went to Dollar Tree. And Darren, you will not believe Dollar Tree has these workbooks for one dollar. Your edition, your edition workbooks. Um, and English, science, toys. To they have the toys also, I like. My son also wants to be a host. And so, a family dollar. <laughs> Give me one second. Because the family sure. dollar has the, the, the amazing just, toys. What what I? Uh, they have. Do you have the toys or like why? Okay, go downstairs and tell daddy all about it. This uh, is this is like Darren. So yes. Mom, so daddy so at the Family daddy. Dollar, I was able to find all of these um great workbooks. And um in addition to the workbooks, what I also do is I go online and I Google, okay, addition. English for kindergartners, and I print out the worksheets and I have everything structured for the week and I put it in a folder. And so I'm able to keep them on a schedule and keep them on a structure. And then also give them uh, other classes that they wouldn't be doing in school. So we do art, we do cooking, 
<laughs> we go outside, we do yoga. So it's like all these things that he wouldn't be able to get um, through the Zoom meetings we're able to do at home. Wow, amazing. So I wanna talk a little bit about mothers, right? You've done a good job of actually creating a community for mothers where mothers mm -hmm. can actually have a time to come together and deal with stuff that identifies with them, you know, with, with them and the struggles of motherhood or some recreational things for motherhood. Talk to me about the importance of having um, that community for mothers. You know, it's so important through this pandemic, um, you know, I've been reaching out to some of my mom friends and just to see how they're doing. And sometimes I'll see posts that they'll put up and some of them are starting to feel depressed because it's having to be home all the time now and not having the community and um, not being able to work, you know, because a lot of us had to choose um, the ho home. I mean, yeah, we had to choose because with this, like, you know, we had to choose the home life rather than the career life. And for some of us, that was very difficult. So it's like through that transition, um, it hits your self-esteem. And so when you don't have someone to talk to, someone that understands what you're going through, you can feel isolated. You can feel alone. You know, there's almost there's only so much super simple songs that we can take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and so it's so important to be able to talk to someone and let them know how you're feeling. Um, and and even if you don't have a solution, at least I know that I'm able to talk to someone. That's so important. Mm -hmm. Well, let me take a quick break and come back with more with Veronica. You're watching Perspectives with Darren Hyman. Stay with us. We're coming right back right after this. We know that people are dealing with the health crisis, but there's also a lot of Food insecurity. We're giving out healthy food options, and that's what's key here. If you're a senior, you have a disability, they'll actually deliver meals to you. The residents are anxious, they're worried, they're scared, and they want to be tested. When things were happening in our community, and, and we couldn't get the help. And there's almost a presumption of criminality that, that attaches to your skin color. The site will prioritize those who are at highest risk in the population. If you feel symptoms and you'd like to visit one of these COVID-19 testing sites here in the Bronx, you may call the State Health Department's hotline. Important to note about this site is no reservations are needed. This is a walk-in clinic. A lot of us are out of work and looking for something to do. We have the machinery and the skills to make large scale of these masks and gowns. Take care of your people. It's going to go way further than we actually can understand. Right now, employees like myself are just adjusting to the new reality. back here on Perspectives. Darren Jaime here with you, and we want to wish you a very happy new year as we're coming to you throughout the course of 2021. A lot of different things to talk about, a lot of changes that you may see coming, particularly with our show, so stay tuned. We're excited for a very, very, very special year. Our guest today, Veronica Guiti, she is sharing with us a little bit about motherhood and uh, her new venture that she's got going on. And I want to talk to you, Veronica, for a second about mothers, right? Uh, and not just mothers, but all of us who've had to try to navigate through COVID. You've done some work in terms of trying to provide community, but talk to us about from a mother's perspective and just from your perspective about this whole challenge of navigating COVID. Um, so I think really, um, like I was talking about earlier, it's really about the transition piece for me. Um, for our, like I said, I was getting ready to get back out there into my career and then this happened and I had to make a decision uh, whether I was going to focus on the kids homeschooling or what or send them to school. And at the time, well, you know, everything was shut down. So it was like, OK, my husband can't do it. He has to work. So I have to make the decision to stay home um, uh, or to you know focus on the kids schooling and when you get thrown into something that you're not expecting, um, you just have to, as moms, I just feel like we just 
we just go with it and we're like, all right, what do I have to do to make this work? But at the same time, you do have to recognize your feelings and what you're going through and deal with that as well. Because when it's when you're not dealing with it, then it's like you can start to take it out on the kids. And that's what I speak to a lot of my mom friends about. Like, how are you feeling today? You know, it's okay. Acknowledge those feelings, but don't stay in the feelings and know that I'm here for you to talk to. Um, you know, like I, you know, that's why I was talking about the community aspect earlier. And if you don't have a community, like uh, your your mom friends to talk to, that's why you know, uh, my Facebook page, uh, Instagram. There's a new um, app called Clubhouse where you see so many moms who are craving just to have conversation about this, about what they're going through. And so I just think just talking it through and seeing how other uh, moms are doing it, it, it makes it so helpful. The way I'm doing it is just taking it moment by moment. That's what right. I tell everybody, especially with this new year in 2020, we all had all these expectations. I'm not expecting anything. What I'm expecting is just more grace. And that's what I, I'm telling um, the mom unity uh, today. Instead of saying new year, new me, go in with new year, new grace, because you have to give yourself grace every single day. You know, you're doing the best that you can, and that's all you can do. You can only control what you can. We can't control anything else. So what can I control? All right, I can control how my kids are going to be learning today. And um, I can sit down with them and make sure that even with all the craziness going on in the world, that I'm able to provide that that calmness to them. I'm able to provide that safe place for them. That's what we do as moms. Yeah. And you're doing it well, right? So talk to me about what's been the easiest part out of all of this for you. The easiest part? Mm -hmm. The easiest part. I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing easy? It's nothing easy about motherhood. <laughs> The easiest okay. part is just loving my kids, loving my kids, and um, and just be and then just trying to be the best person I can for them. Um, I would say that uh, I don't know, Darren. That that's pretty hard because it it ha really hasn't been easy. To, uh, yeah, I guess the easiest. That's not a hard question. All right. Huh. I said, let me find out you got stumped by a hard question. You know, I stumped a reporter on a hard question. Really? Like, okay. Well, let me ask you this then. Talk to me about the hardest part of this all. Because, of course, there may be nothing easy, but you certainly can identify what the hardest part is. The hardest part is adjusting. That's the hardest part. Trying to make it work on a daily basis. Um, trying to uh, be okay with the fact that maybe, yes, I have to push my uh, aspirations aside for a few months or maybe for this year um, and just to readjust, uh, just to uh, refocus um, my goals. Um, we always get asked the question, you know, can moms have it all at the same, can moms have it all? And for me, I always say, yes, you can have it all, but maybe not at the same time. Uh, we go through many seasons. And right now I'm just in the season of having to uh, focus on, on, on homeschooling, but while I'm becoming adjusted to it, then I can start to add more things to my plate. So, all right, focusing on the homeschooling, I do it from eight to 2.30 and then maybe from 3.30 to 5.30, I'm focusing on moms making work and picking up other few projects. So I think the hardest part for me has just been um, making new adjustments. Mm -hmm. And so inspiring mothers is what you aim to do. And I know you want to do that throughout the course of this year. Talk to people about, you know, how they can get in touch with you and the, and the, and the things that you're offering during a time like this. So what I'm offering mainly is um, is a safe place uh, for moms. Uh, virtually, like this year, we're going to be doing our third annual vision board. Um, the vision board has always been great, uh, a great way for us to come together and just remind ourselves of what our passions are, what our dreams are, what our goals are, either short term or long term goals. Now, this time we have to do it virtually. But what I'm doing is that I'm getting coaches to come and speak to the moms to encourage them to know, like, listen, I know we're in this season. But you're not, your dreams don't have to be forgotten. I know we're in this season and you may have to make the transition and maybe now you're a full-time homeschool mom, but just taking one hour for yourself can still make a difference. Just taking a moment to just even jot some, your, your dreams down, jot your goals down, and just making realistic um, goals 
just doing one thing can make the difference instead of just doing nothing. So I just want to inspire them to continue to keep their dreams in focus because sometimes it's like we just we just feel defeated because it's like everything is on top of us and it's like, how am I going to get it done? It just starts with one small goal. So that's what I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to be doing our vision board in February. And then I'm looking forward to having more virtual events because what we were doing in the past, we're having events every month um, and bringing speakers on stage and uh, just allowing them to talk to, I call them the mom unity, but this time we're going to do it virtual so that they know like, listen, we can still get this done. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break with Veronica. We're going to come back. We're going to continue in our final segment. Stay with us. Perspectives will be right back in a minute. Back here on Perspectives, Darren Jaime here with you. We are continuing our conversation with Veronica Guiti talking about moms make it work. And uh, yes, Veronica's had a storied career. She's worked with uh, us here at BronxNet, of course, and uh, Black Enterprise, also Essence. Give me a little bit about how that has actually helped to formulate who you are and what you're doing right now. That's a great question. You know what, Darren, it has helped me a lot. Um, I just posted this Instagram post where I was like, for this year, I wanted to really um, structure my kids' day, right? So I went and like I told you, um, you know, I got all their workbooks and I printed all their papers for the week and I la and I labeled everything and I, I just felt so good to know exactly what the day was going to be looking like because before I really got the hang of it, I started in November, I was just doing their lessons daily. And sometimes that can be difficult because you're just kind of like doing it on a whim, but mm -hmm. it makes it so much easier when you have everything done in advance. And the reason I have that mindset is because of the producer in me, you know? So I was looking at their lesson plans as rundowns, you know? Okay. So I knew, I knew exactly um, all right, at 8.45, we have breakfast. At 9.30, we're starting our calendar time and our devotion time. Um, at at uh, 10 o'clock, we're getting into math. And then right after that, we'll have 30 minutes for each lesson. And we'll take five-minute breaks in between. And we have a reward system. Like, like, it just made it better for me to have everything labeled out. And I wouldn't, any moms who are watching out there, I, I would say it's hard to... Um, it may be difficult, but what you can do definitely is to just have everything laid out ahead of time. And that means you may not be getting much sleep because that Sunday, the Sunday before I, when I did it, I stayed up all night. But that prep work will help you throughout the week. So mm -hmm. the way I do it, um, the first thing is to know your child's goals. Once you know your child's goals and what they're supposed to be learning for the year, it makes it easier to break down the lessons. And like I said, use YouTube, go on Google, talk to your, talk to your, um, to your students, uh, to your child's teachers, you know, to their previous teachers and let them know, Hey, you know what? I'm homeschooling right now, but what would you say that they, what, what should you, what would you say that they should be learning right now? And the teachers are there to help. Um, you know, there's so many community pages on Facebook with homes, other homeschool moms who are providing resources. Um, Abeka is a really good resource if you want to uh, look into it. Uh, My Father's World is another great resource um, where they actually, if you don't, if you can't plan out everything for yourself, they plan out everything for you. But mm -hmm. make sure that you have your lessons planned in a week so that when it's time for on Monday comes, you know exactly what your children are going to be learning. And the schedule not only helps them, but it helps you as well. It helps you feel less overwhelmed. Yeah. So talk to me about this word break, right? You talked about finding breaks. And as a parent, you have to also structure those breaks for a child. And then also you have to structure a break for yourself. How do you go about yeah. when to constructively give your child a break? 
And then also, how does it work for you in getting a break? Because the biggest things that sometimes we face is burnout, right? And yeah. burnout happens when we don't take constructive breaks. Yeah. I would say you have to learn to be flexible. The great thing that I love about homeschooling is the flexibility of everything. So yes, we have to be downstairs at 8.45, but if we're downstairs at nine o'clock, you know what? It's okay. You know, and you have to tell yourself that, like, I'm doing the best I can. If you're five, 10 minutes late, it's okay. Um, the breaks are important because you want, you don't want your children just sitting down for the, for an hour or two hours straight. Who, who wants to do that? Even as adults, we need breaks to stretch. So you want to do that for your children. I find that it's easier when after the math lesson, I'm like, okay, Kwasi, Joy, take a five minute stretch break. When they're taking a break, I'm taking a break because <laughs> it's a lot of energy. So you, you let them just run around and stretch and play with their toys for a minute. And then after the refresh, they come back. And then sometimes after they've done like maybe, because we have about six subjects that we do. So after the third subject, I let them even take a longer break, a 15 minute break. Go do what you want to do. And then that helps me as well. So Breaks are so important because it's just giving you that refuel. You're refreshing your mind. You're refreshing yourself. And then you come back to it. Um, and then for us, um, I always say that, um, you know, when you take these breaks for yourself, you, you are allowed to take a breath. I've been learning that, that taking moments to just breathe really helps. And I didn't know how important it was to just be able to breathe and it sounds like a simple thing, but it just helps you to focus and to just bring yourself back to center because all this that's going on is very stressful and it may be impacting you in a way that you don't even know that it is. And it may be impacting your children in a way that you don't know that it is. Um, my son is a very social, he's a social butterfly. He mm -hmm. enjoyed being the classroom. He enjoyed being with his uh, his teachers, and he enjoyed even the Zoom meetings that I did not enjoy. I didn't think he was enjoying it. The other day, he told me he was like, "Mom, I miss my Zoom meetings." I'm like, "You do?" He's like, "Yeah, I miss seeing the other kids." Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like we really have to take time and just when during these breaks, even talk to your children. How are you feeling about this today? How are you feeling about this homeschooling today? You know, they will tell you more than you even know. Yeah. Well, we got to leave it there. But before we do, tell us once again how people can get in touch with you and um, how they can get a, be a part of Moms Make It Work real quick. Um, you can find us on Instagram and on Facebook at Moms Make It Work. Um, I always say that you can just send me a message. Even if you just want to talk, I am here to listen. You are not alone in this um in this journey that we're going through. And remember to just also, I want to leave you all with this. Give yourself grace. You know, um, we are in times that we never expected. So just remember that you're doing the best that you can and remember to only control what you can and to take it moment by moment and to breathe. Uh -huh. Veronica, we're leaving it there. I want to promise you this, that when I take a break, I'm calling you and you're filling in for me. There you go. So you got it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have that. I didn't Good have to have you. Thank you for having me. And proud of all the things that you've been doing. I mean, you've done wonderful work. So continue, keep doing what you're doing. And we're glad to have you here on Perspectives. Thank you so much. All righty. Veronica Guiti, our guest here on Perspectives. We got to leave it there. I'm Darren Hyme. Listen, everybody, I told you 2021, we're going in a little bit different direction. No, we're not talking about Washington. We're coming back to that real soon. But we need a break, right? We need some grace for this space, right? In this moment, we need to make sure that we're you know, rejuvenating ourselves. And if you're a mother, hopefully you got some tools that are going to actually help you to prepare yourself as you get ready to balance out the year 2021. Well, that's my perspective and that's our perspective show for you. I'm Darren Hyman saying take care, God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.